Arn, welcome to the Men Made For More podcast. Dude, I'm, I'm so stoked to have you on here today. Oh my God, Dave. I can't tell you enough, man. I am smiling ear to ear. I know we were just chatting right now, but I truly had this part of my night routine last night and I had this part of my meditation this morning. Like that's how pumped and jazzed I am to be here right now. Just when you can prepare the night before and then wake up and do a little bit more preparation. So thank you for having me. Yeah, so great. I'm so excited to have you on here. And we were talking, we, we got on the phone, we were talking even before we hit record here. And it's like, we've, we've already recorded three, pod, well, we haven't recorded them. We, we spoke through three podcasts worth of content. And then we're like, we should probably start hitting record now so that we can, <laughs> so we can actually share this out with people. So why don't, you, why don't you give people a little background here, kick it off with uh, you know, your, your story, both personally, professionally, where you're at, what you're up to. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. So to all the listeners out there, I'm Arn McCoppergall. I'm a district manager for uh, the, the most amazing wireless company out there. It's T-Mobile USA. If you're not part of us, it's okay. I'm not mad. Just give, give me a holler. I'll take care of you. But uh, that's what I do professionally. And I, I know the title says district manager, but I like to tell people I develop and lead people. I inspire people. I listen to people. That's what I do for a living is I listen and I develop and I lead. And I think when that to me is why I get out of bed every single morning loving what I do. This is not a day in the week where I go, oh my God, today's a day, I just don't like my job. To be totally honest with you, I don't remember the last time I said that. So professionally, that's what I do. Personally, I am a loving husband. I have a fur baby, French bulldog, her name is Nala. And here's a, here's a crazy fact. Uh, this Tuesday is her birthday, five years old. So wow. yes, Happy we birthday. do celebrate. Yeah, thank you. Yes, we do celebrate our fur baby, but personally, uh, I am I'm an aspiring life coach. I am an aspiring social media influencer because I learned a long time ago is if you love what you do, share it with the world, help others. So personally, that's what I do. I, I, I do it with my family. I do it with my wife. I do it with my friends. And then the one biggest story I love to share that really kind of kicked this off, and I know we'll talk more about it in the podcast, is my struggle with weight. You know, at one point in time, I was 240 plus pounds. I walk around now at 182, and it's crazy. If you looked at me and you met me today, you would be like, man, you're one of the lucky ones. You're the ones that are always in shape. You were born in shape and not the case. And I can tell you right now, when you don't invest into your health and you don't invest into your fitness, like it really uh, affects what your life outside of that will look like as well, too. So uh, hopefully that wasn't too long, but I mean, I, I mean, personally and professionally, that's, that's who I am. And for the listeners, I hope you got your popcorn ready because uh, it's going to be a good one today, man. <laughs> no, dude, that's, that's, that's perfect length. And I, I think people can already tell the, you know, the energy you bring and it's, it's evident, you know, with your professional success, but also, you know, personally, that's, you know, that's something that, that runs, runs so deep and can tell it runs across all areas of your life. And that's, that's really what we want to dive into today because your weight story, your story of losing weight is, is, is so cool and inspirational in a lot of ways. But just simply, you said you climbed up to 240 and now you're walking around at a healthy 180. But what we really want to talk about is the, the limiting beliefs and the, the lack of a growth mindset that can rob you of health and fitness for sure, but can rob you of so many other things in, in your life too. Because you said when you were telling me when you're up at 240, you were, you were telling other people and you were telling yourself, you're like, I'm, I'm 10 pounds from being in shape. Like I, yeah. if I only can lose 10 pounds and, and probably telling yourself like, oh, I could do that in a, you know, a couple months if I really wanted to, I could drop 10 pounds. And it was, it was a, it was a lie. You were telling others, you were telling yourself even, and created this other, you know, spiral of, of limiting beliefs and things that were, affecting relationships, affecting so many other things. And how did you go about breaking this cycle? How did you go about even like, where do you even start for someone that might be in that, that same cycle? You know, what are the dangers of this and where would you recommend someone starting out? Yeah, absolutely. No, that's, that's, I thank you for sharing that and great, great question. And here's the thing, Dave is not lying. Like I literally sold myself, made myself believe I was literally 10 pounds overweight. And when he talks about a growth mindset, for all the listeners, you need to understand that's how powerful your mind is. Your mind will allow you to believe what you want to believe. Like if you just wake up and say, I'm going to have a bad day today. I'm going to have a bad day today. I'm going to have a bad day today. Guess what? You're going to have a bad day. But if you wake up and say, I'm going to have a good day. I'm going to have a good day. I'm going to have a good day. There's a 99.9% .9 probability that day, you're going to have a freaking good day. We know that. But if I keep telling myself 
back then, and which I did, I'm 10 pounds overweight. You know what I did? That made me believe I was only 10 pounds overweight, but that I would wear a big shirt. And, and this, I mean, everybody out there knows they've done, done this. If you wear a shirt and your shirt lays on your belly, you get a bigger shirt. That's what, that's, that's what you do. That's, it's, it's all based on how your belly shows in your shirt. And for me, that was like my, my tactic. I sold myself so good that I found things to do to make that come to life. So when, when you're doing that, I was more focused on hiding the truth. I was more focused on making myself believe something that wasn't true. And to the, for you, what, what you asked me is, it takes a why, man. It takes something life-changing has to happen. And you need to be influenced by others. You need to be influenced by the ones around you to see the real truth. You know what I mean? Because when I would go to family parties, and, you, and, and here's the beauty thing about this. If you're seeking for help, just go to a family party. Your aunts and your uncle, your grandmas and your grandpas, they will never lie to you. Because the first thing they will say is your weight. They'll call you out. And I remember back then that would happen. And when they would say that, I would tell myself, ah, Aaron, it's okay. You're only 10 pounds overweight. Watch. You lose 10 pounds. You come back to the next party. And they're like, oh, Aaron, you're back in shape, you know? But that wasn't, that wasn't the truth. But, you know, the crazy thing is that still wasn't enough for me. I was still trying to convince myself. And when you talk about a growth mindset, sometimes it's not family you need help from. Sometimes it's from a total stranger you need help from. So that I will share with everybody here is that stranger was a doctor that I saw and I had to get my blood work. And when I got my blood work done and when a doctor sits there, someone you don't know, there's no relationship there, right? Tells you you're borderline diabetic high blood pressure, high cholesterol. And if you keep going down this path, you're not guaranteed life. That's the motivation sometimes people need to hear. So when a lot of people ask me about my story and a lot of people connect with me and, and people are like, hey, how do I help me lose weight? And this and that, I always tell them, number one, get your blood works checked. And I think metrics is such an important thing. In my business, I can't move my business from A to B if I don't understand the metrics that are there. I just wake up and say, hey, we're going to have, you know, we're going to kill it. We're going to hit our targets. It's going to happen. I mean, yes, maybe one day, but not consistently, right? But if I understand the targets of who's helping the business, who's hurting the business, then I know where to allocate my resources. I know where to allocate my leadership to help move that business. And when you understand your body's metrics, then you know where to start. And that, that's the why that really got me going. So I know I said, if you want to hear the truth, go see family. That is true. But if you want to get motivated and you want to change your life, go, go talk to someone you don't know. That, that, that would be something. And that's what I do this day in, in my life now, professionally and personally, right? Like I can talk to somebody I work out with every single day and say, hey, how, how's my lift? How, how's, how's, my, how's my form? They're going to say 99.9% of the time, it's always good. But you talk to someone you don't know, they'll actually tell you how it is. And that's how it is professionally as well, too. Like when I seek for help and I seek for mentorship, I don't seek it from people I have a great relationship with because they'll never keep it 100 with you. But if you seek it from someone you don't know, but you admire, you say, look, I respect you as a leader. I love what you do. I love how you show up. Will you mentor me? This is what I do. What feedback do you have for me? You'll get the best information in the world. So that's what I learned a long time ago from a growth mindset perspective is your mind is powerful. But if you surround yourself around people that just keep, that support you too much, you'll never get the truth. But if you surround yourself with people that you don't know, the truth actually peaks out a little bit more and it kind of will give you that why and that motivation to move in the right direction. So that's what helped me. And for the listeners out there, I hope, I'm hoping that this story helps you because sometimes it takes courage to ask someone you don't know how, for feedback and, and, and it, that's a tough thing that's a tough thing like we once again it goes back to the mindset before you ask someone and like I can be here you can be there by the time I get to you I try try to convince myself I don't want to ask this I don't want to do I don't want to do and you're literally going back and forth and then I get in front of you and it's like game time am I going to do it or not and, and that's the biggest thing right and what well, the thing I can share with everybody is just do it and learn from it you know and uh, I think from from that perspective hopefully that that answers your question. I know that was a little long-winded, but uh, I don't know. I just, I just think it's, uh, I, I, when I tell that story, I just get so jazzed when I share it. 
That answers it. And then some, there's a, a lot of good, you know, good directions want to take off that. Cause I, I totally agree. Like knowing your metrics, whether that's, you know, work goal, business goals, health goals. If you don't know what you're striving for, it's like, how do you know if you're on the right track? If people, you know, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a, a bad goal to say like, I want to get healthy, but what does healthy mean? Like, are you healthier than you were yesterday? Like maybe, maybe not. Like, what are you basing mm-hmm. off of just how you feel, how you, how you look, which mm-hmm. can also be a fleeting thing if we're uh, relying solely on that with body image things. And like, there's a, there's mm-hmm. a lot of layers underneath that. So the more objective metrics you can have behind it, you can really see, okay, am I making progress and use those other subjective me- measures too, but have some objective mm-hmm. things to be able to, to hang your head on and strive for. But I, you know, where, where do you get that help? I love that you said, you know, from a doctor, you mentioned, you mentioned help with lifts, help with business mentorship. Cause I think a lot of people, they hear that they go, okay, yeah, that sounds great, but I'm not going to just go walk up to someone in the street and say like, am I doing this? Well, where have you found, found some of those mentors, found some of those things, whether that be fitness, whether that be work wise, like where have you seeked out the help in these areas? Yeah. I mean, it always starts with people, you know, it really, truly does. Right. So at the end of the day, you, we, like when we talk about metrics and we talk about analyzing, you have to analyze your network. And what I did was there's people I knew that want great things in life. I also knew people that were happy where they were at. And I also knew people that just was going the opposite total direction. So the, the goal is, you're right, it's just hard to walk to a total stranger. But it's not hard to walk up to someone you actually already know. So the goal for me, what I do at professionally and personally, is the magic of your phone book. I guarantee you, if you went through your phone book and you look at every single name, I guarantee if I told you to rate and grade each one, that would they contribute to your life or not contribute, I guarantee you pretty do a damn good job doing that, right? And that's what I do is I seek people I, I do know, people in my network and the ones I respect and the ones I know that are doing great things. And I continue that relationship. And from there, I start asking quality questions of getting better, self-improvement. Where do I get help for this? What would you recommend? And then they will give you, oh, man, this person I talked to, hey, do you mind if you connect me with that person? Do you mind, you know, if uh, I get their contact information? Or I may already kind of know them, or I know of them. Then I'll be like, oh, cool. So when I see them at the, at the job site, I can say, hey, I talked to Dave. And Dave said nothing but great things about what you do to drive this metric or great things what you do to lead your team. If you have time, dude, I'd love to pick your brain. Let's go grab some coffee, right? Uh, let's just chat. Let's put it in the calendar and whatnot. And that's what I do. And like, that's what led me there, right? And I am blessed because my wife is a nurse. So when your wife is a nurse, it's kind of easy to like, like to find a doctor, but she's also the nurse that's cracking the whip of get your blood work checked, get your blood work checked. So once again, it goes back to that family support. It's not saying it's a bad thing. It's a great thing, but that, don't let that be your main resource. So my advice to everyone out there is start with your network, but identify, put your network in certain groups, you know what I mean? And, 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 and seek that resource from the group that's going to give you your best ROI, your best return on your investment, right? Because if you're taking time to talk to a peer, to a friend, the return on investment is hopefully to give you a name, a contact, or a person, or point you in the direction you need to go. That's the return on investment, right? So that's what I would do. Because if you went, if you just talk to anybody, any random person, your best friend, and, and not saying like anybody's best friend there is successful or not successful, but if your best friend is your best friend, but they're not going the direction you want to go, do you really want them to like point you in that direction? Do you really want them to recommend someone to you that's not even helping them, right? So that's, that's my advice from that perspective is start with your phone book. I mean, everybody has one. And, and if you don't, I guarantee you have a Rolodex. <laughs> if you don't have one, go to T-Mobile to a uh, shameless plug. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the, the greatest wireless company. Greatest <laughs> wireless. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> What th- th- this brings up tough things for people because you know people hear this and I think they and you've kind of you've kind of touched on this already but people hear this and they think they have to cut out people from from their network or that it's not beneficial to surround people that are only maybe making them feel good or not giving the honest truth. What's what's that blend look like for for either for yourself personally or, or people that you've helped coach and lead? Like how do you how do you navigate through that? Of like yes, it's good to be around family to have that support to be around people who encourage you and support you but also to Mm -hmm. seek that objective uh, objective advice like what what's that look like 
Yeah, what that looks like for me is some, it's a rule that I live by. Uh, and I think everything in moderation, to be honest with you, everything in the moderation. It's the 80-20. I think if you do too much of one thing, even if it's good, it's just too much. It's too much, you know? Like if I spend way too much time with my wife, I exile my best friend. If I spend too much time with my best friend, I exile my wife. If I spend too much time at work, which I love, I told you, I love my job. But if I spend too much time there, what about my family, right? And, 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 I, and I think that's the 80-20 rule is everything has to be done in moderation. And if, when you do good things, stay with the 80 side. And if you're doing not so good things like cheating on your diet or like spending time with people that don't like, I don't want to say like don't motivate you, but just don't what the value you're looking for 20% of the time. No one needs to like take anybody out the picture unless they did something really, really bad and you have to make life choices, right? Uh, but I think at the end of the day, friends and family are needed. Even the ones that aren't going the direction you need because they, they give you something that the other side doesn't give you. You see what I'm saying? But if they give you too much, that can change your path. And that's the problem, right? So I think what I live by, and I always, I always tell my people this, it's, it's, everything's in moderation. Every, are you spending too much time here? And if you are, call time out, self-reflect, and analyze how you can reduce it. How can you allocate more time here? How do you have more of a balanced life? Because I think when we self-reflect and we do call timeouts in our life, it's, a, it's easier to balance. But if we don't call timeouts, we don't self-reflect, we're just going, going, going. We're going with the flow, and there is no balance. And sometimes we over, like, we, and they created the word, right, binge. That's why people binge. I mean, think about it. People binge eat because they don't have that balance, or they binge on Netflix because they don't have that balance, right? No one said watching Netflix is a bad thing. Watching Netflix for eight hours a day is a bad thing. An hour a day is not a bad thing. You know what I mean? And I, I, and I just think, like, and I, and, I, and I know, I hope you don't kill me because this is all about fitness. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I love my scoop of ice cream. I do. Like, I, I really do. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. I don't eat a scoop of ice cream every day. <laughs> I don't eat a scoop of ice cream every, every week. I enjoy a scoop of ice cream when I want to enjoy it. That balance is that, it's that, once again, it's that one thing that that will give you that, that broccoli won't give me. And I don't get me wrong. I love broccoli. I eat broccoli all the time. I love it. I love chicken breast. I love kale. I love leafy, leafy vegetable. I do, but let's not kid each other. I don't get the satisfaction from that. Like I do from a scoop of ice cream. So hopefully that answers your question from that perspective. It does. And yeah, this is a, this is a health and a fitness podcast, but it's not a perfection podcast. It's not an unrealistic, yeah. like not living life podcast. So I, I don't, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. No, <laughs> there's, there's none of that on here that that's not, that's not shame by, by any means or anything. It's, yeah. it's, it's fine. Yeah. It works for you. I, I, I have a question on the, you know, as you're talking, I, I, cause I totally agree. I'm a big 80, 20 principle guy. I'm, I'm a you know big fan of balance, but at the same time, I, I want to hear your thoughts because are there times and places to get out of balance a little bit and to kind yeah. of pick and choose? Cause, cause you don't, you don't get to your place where you're at in your career and the success you've had or, or get to necessarily dropping that kind of weight without getting out of balance at times. So is that, I want to hear your thoughts on this because I, I have my thoughts on it, but I kind of want to hear what you think of it. Is it always moderation or are there times to, to get out of balance to, to some degree? Oh no. Oh no, absolutely. Yeah. You, you definitely get out of balance. Like, uh, like, it's that constant reminder. When I say that 80-20 rule, it's a rule in my life because rules need to be reminded, right? You got to be reminded about the rules. You need to be educated about the rules. But let's just call it what it is. Rules are also broken. So I'm not going to sit here and lie like I don't break the rules. I do because there's times where you do fall in a rut. There's times when, like I said, I love my job and things are, things are happening, but sometimes everything's happening at once and it changes your path. Or sometimes you, once again, you're influenced and motivated by other people. And you're like, oh, I, I, want, I want that. I want to do that. And you do it. And you're like, I want to I do it again. And I want to do it again. And you fall in this rut, right? And, and then eventually you'll, you'll tell yourself, because the mind's a powerful thing, like, stop doing that. Like, why, why are you doing this? Like, you already enjoyed it. You've done it multiple times. Stop doing it. And then that's when I have to remind myself and educate myself on the 80-20 rule. And that's what kind of hones me back in. But like what happens when, you, when I do get in a rut is, and it's the crazy thing is the outside influences. It's just, it, 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 like, it is so crazy. Like, like if I stay home all day, I can, I'll eat clean 100% of the time. But as soon as I step outside of the house, there's so many influences out there. Especially what I do for a living. I'm always going around 
distribution to distribution, distribution. I'm in meetings, I'm in meetings. And there's things always being like lunch is brought, being brought in. We're going out to lunch. We're going out to dinner. Uh, it's, I have a big family. So it's always someone's birthday <laughs> every, month of, every month of the year. So those are the things, those are the things that are going to tempt you. Those are the things that are going to, are going to make you go to the 20% side. But if you do, but if you do it and you see yourself continuously do it, which happens to me and I see it, it's just, it's just why it's so important for me on why I do what I do every single morning with my morning routine. Like in my morning routine, like I literally go through gratitude and I go through meditation. And I think that's really, really important because when you go to gratitude, you're, you're walking through your whole day of what you're really thankful for. And it can be as easy as just the air you breathe and the sun that's shining on your face. But when you also go through meditation, it is just you and no, nothing else. You're just in your deep silence and you're really thinking about your life you're thinking about what's happening that day. You're thinking about the day before. And for me, that's like an indicator that allows me to know if I'm going down this path of where I need to put myself back to balance and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's uh, hopefully that helps. And that's like kind of like what I do, bud, just because it, it happens, man. I mean, there's, so, there's a lot of outside influences, you know, and if you have a big family, you have lots of friends, the, the mission's harder. Like the mission is harder. You know what I mean? And uh, especially if they're not on the same program as you, if they're all on the same program as you, then, then you're part of this community. Like, okay, cool. It's all good. We all, we're all farmers and we all work out and we all do this. Right. But it, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. That's why, that's why we love our family because you can go to Thanksgiving, which I know is coming up and you love it just because you, you, you know, there's different types of personalities and t different types of mindset. And at, at the end of the day, you just, that's your family and you, and you love them to death by the same time. They're, they're very impactful on how they influence you on what you do. Yeah. Outside influence is huge and not to, not to cut out people that aren't in the same influence, just to, you know, be, be aware and, and know where that, where that line is for you. And I, I think the, you know, meditation piece, quiet, quiet time, journaling, whatever works for people, especially the doers out there, the high achievers mm -hmm. that are out there listening that are always like, in it and striving and doing it's, you know, I, I call it reflect mm -hmm. to direct and it's, it's just quiet time to sit back and blank piece of paper. Like what problems am I dealing with? What's going well right now? What's, you know, what am I struggling with? But mm -hmm. if, if we're not taking time to reflect on that, it's, it's so easy to get caught mm -hmm. on someone else's path for your life because you're responding mm -hmm. to requests, you're doing these things that work ass. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm on this path. I've, I've covered a lot of ground, but is it, is it in the direction that, that I want to be heading? And I, I think that that quiet time, allows allows for some of that and is that you know what other kind of is the meditation your primary you know way of, of making sure that you're staying on track with your goals and your your vision your mission your your calling for life if you will is that is that how you primarily use it or are there any other strategies you have too no i have other strategies i'm glad you bring that up because uh you just said it like journaling it's uh, it's uh, it's it's key i i'm not a big believer in typing like i love like don't me i type emails and stuff like that but I think when you sit down, and you write, it, it's just more meaningful, right? And your thoughts are really going from your mind to your hands, to your pen, to the paper. And I think when you talk about like other resources, that's a, another other resource that I use is yes, meditation. Like I always start my day with grat gratitude. Like you've got, we've got to be grateful for what we have. Like I've shared this story before. And I know a lot of people say this, like, oh my God, 2020 is the worst year. 2020 is such a bad year. But man, if you're focusing on that, I, I challenge anybody out there, Google every single year before 2020, and I guarantee you'll find a lot of bad events. I guarantee you. But there's a flip side to it. Google all the great things that happened in 2020, and Google all the great things that happened all the years before 2020. And I guarantee you, you're going to find some amazing, heartbreaking stories out there, right? And I, and I think from that perspective, it's all about perspective. It's all about, I love how you said self-reflect to redirect, right? And the only way, like, I can sit there and I can think, right? And meditation is great. So I, like I said earlier, I, I go through gratitude and I'm thankful for everything. And I'm, I'm just happy and proud of all the great things that are happening. And then I'll meditate. But sometimes when you meditate, your mind is wandering. Your mind is all over the place. You see what I'm saying? And that's a good thing. Don't get me wrong. That's a good thing. You're visualizing. You're, you're, you're just, just thinking about this. You're thinking about that. You're thinking about ideas. But that is very different versus writing something down. Because when you write things down, now you have something to analyze. You have something to look at. And then you can start journaling off your little certain subject and have subcategories. And now you start building a plan. 
And that's, that's a tactic that I use, not just in my personal life, but in my professional life. And like I always tell my, my team when I see them like typing notes, I, I say, I, I, I'll actually go grab a pad of paper and pen and say, no, use it. Because I just think when you, when you write it down, you get more value, retain the information. And that's the whole goal is to retain what you're doing in life. So when you're journaling, you're actually retaining what you're doing in life. Like you just call it is when individuals go to classes, I read an article where you're lucky if they retain 20% of the information of the class that they're in, right? It's a cone of learning, right? And the only way you're going to learn something or return, retain something is as soon as you learn a subject, talk about it with someone or teach it to someone. That's the only way you're going to retain more information, right? So if you're in school or you're studying for the big test and you want to pass it, pro tip, study it and immediately teach it to someone or immediately talk to someone in your class and say, what did you get out of it? This is what I got out of it. And I guarantee you, you will literally pass that class, right? But going back to the journaling thing, if you write it down and you read it, you retain it and you talk to yourself about it, you go through your mindset without it or you share it with your loved one that's what makes it come to life. So those are tactics that I, I also do. And then on top of that in my routine is you got to consume information. There's not a morning that I will not start my day without consuming information. And that's listening to a podcast. That's reading a book, right? That's watching a YouTube video. Like I have a goal to consume information the first hour of the day. You wake up, your mind's ready, your mind's hungry, and you got, you got to consume that information. So there's like, gratitude, meditation, journaling, consume information, and then I'm ready to rock and roll. You know what I mean? And uh, that's, that's, that's kind of like what I've been doing every single day. And uh, until it do, does me wrong, Dave, I'll stop. But so far, it's been doing great for me, man. <laughs> that's a, I, just, I just did a podcast on this. Uh, it, might have, it might have launched today. I, I recorded it last week. But it, uh, just to your point there, it's like, is it working? And that's sometimes we overcomplicate things. It's like, man, if I'm going in the right direction, people try and change things so, so frequently. And it's like, Hey man, if you're working and moving the direction you want, don't change things just because you see something new or exciting or, or something pop up. But mm -hmm. I love all the things you're saying, Aaron. It's uh, you know, the, the, we share so many philosophies too. I, I've done previous podcasts on the power of journaling. And I say, this isn't something that you can type out or, or write on your phone. I'm, I'm a big, big uh, fan of pen and paper. I've talked about learning versus consuming. And, and to me, that's, you know, I mentioned, I know you mentioned consuming things, but I, I, I think I know what you really mean by that too, is like actually consuming them, but applying them too. And that's what you talked about, mm -hmm. you know, oh, teach yeah. things too often. We're just incoming, inco like listening to podcasts on repeat. And it's like, okay, well, like take some of those things. And that's where something like journaling or stepping back can really allow you to say like, okay, what, what did I learn? How can I apply that? What's, what's the situation in my life, in my work, in my family and my marriage right now that I can take and mm -hmm. okay it's great to get this information but put it into action now and that's the you know that's the key piece that I think people often miss yeah yeah absolutely I know absolutely it just just you know the, the thing for anybody out there is take action like to your I think you said earlier it's not, like it's not a perfect podcast there's no such thing as perfect like I, there, there isn't just do it and learn on the way like when you do it it, you'll maze yourself on the things that you will find out and discover. Yeah, you're going to fall on your face. Yeah, you're going to get punched in the face. And yeah, you're going to make mistakes here and there. But that's the, that's the beauty about the journey. You're going to learn from those mistakes. You're going to learn from those, those times you get punched in the face and stuff like that. So don't wait for the perfect name. Don't work for, wait for the perfect time to start a diet, the perfect time to start working out. Just do it, you know? And I, and I think, yes, Arn, it's easy to just say that. But yeah, but it is easy. Because when I say start your diet, doesn't mean you have to just change everything. Just if you need to start, start small, micro, okay? If you're going to eat a bag of potato chips, don't eat the bag of potato chips, eat a bag of carrots. Then, and, then, and then stay on, your, stay on how you are. And then once you create that habit, then move on to your next, next thing you're going to replace. Working out. You don't need to walk into a gym. Just get up and just walk around your neighborhood for 10 minutes. Or you know what? Do, do a couple sit-ups if you can. If you can't do a couple sit-ups, do a couple push-ups if you can. And just do that every morning for two minutes. And I guarantee you that two minutes will turn into three minutes. That three minutes will turn into five minutes, right? And, and I think to your point is just, just take action. And it's even at work, right? Just take action. And for professionally, like there's so many great leaders out there, so many great employees out there have great ideas, but they're waiting for the perfect question to ask. or so they're waiting for the perfect like moment to do something. No, just do it. 
And, it, and if it works, awesome. If it doesn't work, learn from it and self-discover and like to your point, self-reflect to redirect. Okay, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Why didn't it work? What can I do differently? And, and I think that's the challenge, you know, from a perspective. So yes, um, for me, it's easy. But for you, it can be easy as well too. But starting small. If you're trying to go big, then you're going to get discouraged. If you start big, it's going to throw, it's, 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 it's not going to be believable to you. You know what I mean? But uh, if you start small and you get those little wins, and it's all about the little wins, man. It's all about the little wins. Just like, like treat it like sports. The more wins you get, the better chances you get into the playoffs. And if you're in the playoffs, you have the better chance of winning the championship. And if you win the championship, you're raising the trophy and there's a parade for you. That's what life is, people. That's what life is. You want to lose weight? The ultimate weight is, I want to lose 30 pounds. That's the championship. What are the little wins that are going to get you to the playoffs? And how are you going to win the playoffs that's going to get you to your championship? That's, 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 that's the best way I can share that uh, perspective on my side, just because we're so caught up on the big wins. We're caught up. I was talking to a coworker yesterday, and he was talking about this, how his peer was like, oh, he got this big deal. He got this big deal. And I go, hey, bud, I love it. He's hitting home runs. We're going to hit singles. We're going to hit singles, and we're going to have a high, higher batting average. And the higher batting average is going to result to runs. Because here's the thing, bud. When he hits a solo home run, that's one run. We hit a single, and there's two people on base, that's two runs. That's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on the singles. And then, like, his mind was blown just from that perspective because he was so caught up on what his peer was doing and not focusing on the little wins that we needed to work on. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, man, it just, ah, I got goosebumps. Just, I guess it's like good, 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 good talk right now, man. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. Yeah, you're, you're just bringing it, man. There's, there's like a million questions I've had to leave on set already just because there's so many good, good points coming up. But I, I love, I love, you know, little wins and, you know, those things too. We talk about, we talk about whether we're losing weight, whether we're talking work, it's like, it's these little wins. It's reinforcing the identity you have for yourself. It's not so much about the perfect action. It's about taking steps towards the new identity of who you want to be. And if you want to be, if you're someone who's overweight and you want to be someone who's fit, you have to start taking actions of someone who's fit. And that doesn't mean you have to have all the answers figured out of a fit person like well they're tracking their macros and they're doing this and that and they're like this percentage in this workout it's like yes you could go that extreme if you want but like just starting with the small changes because you have to start to change your identity from someone who's overweight to someone who's fit from someone who's not successful at work to someone who is a thought leader uh, you know someone geared in on growth and that's where we talk the growth mindset stuff it's even you know you say things from switching from a home run hitter to being like, Hey, we're going to be someone who hits singles because that over time is going to win where the person who hits home runs is going to strike out a whole bunch of times. You might see the big flashy ones, but the guy swinging for the fences is going to strike out more than the one who's just consistently doing that. And I think there's, you know, so much good. And I, I just wanted to reinforce that because there's, there's so much power in that in being able to shift that. And I, I think it starts with, with an identity shift in, in your head too. And, and I don't know if you can, if you have anything to you know back this up or anything you want to add on it, because when we talk growth mindset, it's not enough to just do the actions. It's, it's having to adopt mm-hmm. this, this new identity, adopt this willingness to be someone greater. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. You know, when you adopt an identity, it's self-belief. You know what I mean? You got to believe in yourself. You just, that's, that's what you've been told since a little kid. Like your parents, have, our parents have told us, believe in yourself, you can do it. Right. And you've heard this all your life, but you don't tell yourself that enough. You, we doubt ourselves all the time. You can't do it. I don't believe in you. And I just think when you have the, when you find something that you want to do or you want to change in your life, that, that identity shift is once again, you got to ask questions, right? So you got to understand the why, like, why do you want to change that person? Why do you want that? And I think when you do things like that and you write it down and you look at it every single day, that's what helps your identity shift and change. But the problem is we all know when we get motivated, there's a shelf life there, man. Motivation, if you're lucky, lasts about 72 hours, then it's spoiled. And we all know no one ain't drinking spoiled milk. It ain't going to happen. We, put, we replace it. And we replace that milk with another milk, that's another motivation, right? So you have another motivation, 72 hours is gone, right? And I, I think I share that with everyone just because how do you sustain your motivation? You sustain your motivation by is asking quality questions and why are you even motivated by that? 
What, okay, if you get that, why do you want that in your life? What does it do for your life? Where does it take you? Where, what's the, and I think when you write these things down, you have these questions and you have this stuff talk with yourself, it starts shifting your identity because now you start believing like, man, this is, I really want this. And then now you go from motivation to I really want this. And now I really want this becomes a priority, right? And I'm going to share a story with you on what I mean by priority. Priority is if it's really important to you, there's nothing that's going to get in your way. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. Let me share this with you. I used to be a big gamer growing up. I haven't played video games in a very, very, very long time. But if you know this, the PlayStation 5 just got pre-orders released like a week and a half ago. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know why, but I want it. And I started writing questions. Why, like, why do I want this? And I started writing, I go, well, you know, I have nephews and nieces and they come over, they'll have, they'll have a game system to play, you know, and sometimes it's okay, it's okay to disconnect for like an hour to play some game just to get away from reality and play. And I, and I, thought, okay. and I, and I said, oh, it's a good furniture piece. I, that's, that was my convincing argument with Kirti. It's a furniture piece. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I want this. And you know, the crazy thing is, I was so dedicated, nothing was gonna get in my way to get that PS5. And what I mean by that is when pre-orders came out, you had to go through all these big box retailers, through the website, through the links, type in your credit card, type in your address, try to get this, try to get this PS5. Sure enough, denied, denied. If it wasn't that important to me, the first denial, I would have stopped and moved on with my day. But I'm telling you, Dave, nothing was going to stop me. Link after link after link after link after failure after failure after, and I was asking myself, am I not typing the credit card information enough? Do they have Apple Pay function where I can just have Apple Pay? And I literally kept going and going. And I am proud, so anybody that's listening, if you're jealous, you should be jealous, I have a PS5 coming on November 12th. And that's where it goes to the mindset of if it's a priority to you, nothing will stop you. And that means changing your identity and shifting that in your mind. But in order to get there, you need to find out why you want that. You need to find the reason why you're going there. And the only way you're gonna find out how to get why you wanna go there is by asking yourself these questions. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to the people around you? What does it mean to your future self? And it's powerful. And take the PS5 out of it. We can insert any any goal in there. I'm glad you got the PS5 though, by the way. Yeah. But, but Thank I, you. And you you can you can play you can play on my PS5 whenever you want. Yeah, party at <laughs> party at Arn's place. I love it. But dude, so it's so true because like I mean, people don't realize the amount of times that you're gonna fail, the amount of things like people people always overestimate how easy a plan is gonna be when they're like, okay, I'm ready to lose weight, and they don't take into account all the things that are going to come up that are going to, you know, family events and food and social things and like spouse and, Oh, I have to prepare food and, and cost of it, like all these things that come up. And if you don't have that connected to a why, then any one of those things could derail, or maybe you can handle, you know, if you're relying on the shelf life of motivation, you know, maybe you can weather two or three of those things. But what happens when three of those things happen every single day for weeks on end and you have stress in your work and stress in your life and those things. And, if you don't have that rooted to your why, then it's like, you're going to, you know, at some point you're going to crack if you're relying on, on willpower alone, you're not tying that to, you know, who do I want to be? Why do I want to be this? What, you know, for you, I'm guessing when you heard the doctor say that, Hey, you, you might not see your life as, as through as long as you want. It's like, well, what's like, what about my family, my, my wife, my, you know, like all those things start, start ringing deep. And then like, that makes it easier to, to see change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know absolutely and like going back to the power of journaling when you write things down and you can look at it every single day it's just a constant reminder it's like it's like your own marketing team marketing to you every day you know what I mean like the advertising team like hey hey Aaron you want to lose weight remember <laughs> like it's like whatever you write hey Aaron you want to accomplish this goal remember and it's that constant reminder because when you when you force yourself to look at it and it's easy it's easy you know the beauty thing about writing is you can literally have a pad of paper like this with words and you can literally put on your nightstand. You can literally put on your dinner table. You can literally put on your office. You can literally put on your passenger seat of your vehicle and it's right there. And when you pick it up, you can literally read it out loud and go, that's my why, that's my reason. This is why I'm doing it. We need reminders. It, it, it's, it, there's so much happening in our lives. We need these reminders. And there's a lot of temptations out there that are trying to detract you from your past and your reminders put you back on course. 
you know? And like, and like I said, you're going to fail. It's going to, it's going to happen. You're going to fail. And if you feel like you're not going to fail, you're lying to yourself. But the goal is how fast do you get back up, dust your shoulders off and keep moving forward. And that's, that's, that is the goal is to get back up and keep moving, but to learn why you fail. Like I always tell my team this all the time. You're allowed to fall on your face once. Just don't fall on your face for the same reason. Because if you keep falling, for the, falling on your face for the same reason over and over again, your body language is telling Aaron, I just don't care about that initiative. <laughs> you just, you're just too afraid to tell me. You're too afraid to tell me, like, I don't want to do that. You're just afraid. But your body language is telling me that exact same message. So you're telling me one way or another. So instead of you telling me that because you don't want to tell me that, why don't you sit with me and talk to me on why you don't buy, why you don't buy in? Tell me why you don't believe in that. Tell me why you think it's not important. I'd love to hear your perspective. I don't know everything. I tell my team all the time, I don't know everything. I can be wrong every single day. But if we don't talk back and forth to the self-discover and seek for understanding, we'll never figure it out. But, if, but we just can't live in a world where we're not being honest with each other. We can't live in a world where you keep falling for the same reason and your body language is telling me, like, I don't believe in that, right? Because I want to help you. And that, that, it goes with health. It goes with fitness, you know? When you say, oh, my God, I'm too busy at work. I couldn't make it to the gym. Oh, my God, I got home from late, so I couldn't cook something healthy and clean. Okay, one time. You do that every day, your body language is basically saying to you, I don't want to work out. I don't believe in it. I don't want to eat healthy. I don't believe in it. Then you need to have a self-discovery conversation with yourself on, okay, why don't you believe in it? Why don't you want to work out? Is it too hard? Is your coach not good enough? Is, 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 is the routine too aggressive? Is not modified enough for you? Okay, you don't want to eat healthy. Why not? Because it's too expensive? Okay, let's find other solutions to get more affordable, healthy food, right? Is it, is it because it's, it's too, it's too time-consuming? Like, oh, my God, eating, eating fast food is so much faster than eating healthy. Okay, so let's talk about meal prepping. Let's talk about planning before that, right? And when you start having these conversations and you start getting more buy-in and you, and you remind the person or your inner self, remember why you started to begin with. You wanted to eat healthy because your blood pressure was through the roof. You wanted to start working out because your, your daughter is getting married and you want to be able to walk her down the aisle, right? Whatever the case may be. So uh, that to me, I think it's so powerful from a perspective of what your body's telling. May not, you not be not, might not be saying it out loud, but just watch what your body's doing, man. And your body will tell you a lot. And so much of that's happening behind the scenes though, subconsciously. And that's where journaling brings mm -hmm. it to light. That's where having someone you know, to, that you trust that, you know, the mentorship, the things that we talk about of having those things to identify. Cause a lot of times we just don't, we don't even realize that's happening. The self-talk I have, if I didn't, if I didn't journal and I've gotten, I've gotten away from journaling and in, in seasons of my life and it's, it's noticeable difference. It's, it's something that's mm -hmm. here and here to stay in mind right now as of, you know, within the last you know, year. So I got back into it again. And it's like, I'm like, man, I can't believe I got away from this. And you can, again, a lie that I'm like, well, I don't need to journal. Like it's a lot of work to journal. I'm tired at the end of the day. I don't mm -hmm. like, I have other stuff mm -hmm. I want to get started on right away. And there's, there's so many things we can, you know, we can lie to ourselves in that specific example. And that's just, but if we're not mm -hmm. taking that time to pause and actually think about it, then these things are going to be dictated for us from the things we're watching, from the things we're consuming, mm -hmm. from the people we're around. Mm -hmm. And that, that flood of, of subconscious, you know, whatever you want to call it, if you're not, you know, if you're not focusing on the right things and focusing on what you're grateful for, yeah. focusing on the little things that are going yeah. well, then that creates some, some negative momentum over time. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I love that you share that just because sometimes people stop journaling or don't want to journal because I don't have time. Like, oh, I don't have time to sit down for 45 minutes to an hour to start writing. I mean, I mean spoiler alert. There's never, no one ever rolled out a time limit on how long you have to journal. If you wanted to journal for one minute, journal for, if you want to write one sentence, write one sentence. If you want to meditate for one minute, me, just close your eyes and breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth for 60 seconds. That's meditation. And like, don't feel like I don't have time because everybody has one minute. Everybody can write one sentence. So you do have the time. Right. And even for me, I go back to micro, I even micro journal sometimes. And what I mean by that is I always travel with my notebook. You know what I mean? I always have this pad of paper and I have my journal with me. Right. And sometimes it, when I'm out and about and I'm like, oh my God, I think something, I'll write it on my notebook and then come home and write it in the air. So I'll write things down throughout the day sometimes. So sometimes 
I, I, you know, I journal not just in the morning, but I also journal throughout the day because great ideas or great thoughts come through here and I write things down. But you know the crazy thing and why I share this? It's because that one minute, once again, will turn into two minutes. That two minutes will turn into five minutes. That five minutes will turn into 20 minutes. And you'll start seeing the value behind it. And that goes with meditation. That goes with reading. Like a lot of times when people go, I don't want to read. No one's asking you to read a whole book every day. If you could, that's awesome. That's phenomenal. If you had that, that's a superpower I wish I could have, is I could read books super fast, multiple books in a day. That would be the best superpower in the world. You know what I mean? But read two pages a day. Read an article. Subscribe to, you know, mentorships that sends you articles every day and read it. That takes about five minutes. Like, that's consuming information and learning how to apply that into your real life. I mean, so I just want to, once again, spoiler alert, no one ever rolled out you have to journal for 32 minutes. Like, I, and if, I, if I'm wrong, please, please correct me because I missed, that, I missed that memo. I literally missed that memo and I got I to gotta relearn how to journal. But I don't remember anybody ever saying this is the amount of time you have to journal every day just to get success. I don't know. Have you? <laughs> I have not. It's I, I love I love all that you're saying. Cause it's it's funny how you know how, how similar we are in some ways, at least with what you're you know what you're preaching. Is I I got back into journaling by writing down. And I know this sounds silly. Like why would I write down one sentence? How I had to get back into my nighttime. Like I started morning journaling is a little easier for me. Like I, I enjoy the mornings. I'm up early. Like it it helps me get centered, but I was having a hard time with my evening journal. Like I, I get so, I, I crash pretty hard at the end of the day. I'm a early to early to bed guy, old, old person, grandpa, grandpa bedtime. <laughs> and, uh, I crashed pretty hard. So I was having a hard time with it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start. And I started writing out one sentence. I'm like, I'm going to do one sentence, one thing I'm thankful for every night. And that I did that for, you know, a, a week, maybe two weeks. Then all of a sudden I'm like, well, I'm here. I start writing. I'm like, okay, I'll write, I'll write a paragraph. And, and there's no magic recipe. To this There's no, like you write a sentence for two weeks and then you get just like start doing like the action of doing it creates incredible things over time. And I'm going through the exact same thing with meditation right now. I've never been, never been one to stick with meditation, even though I know the importance of it. And right now, what am I doing? One minute before bed. And sometimes that turns into five minutes. Some, sometimes it's just yeah. one minute, but that's, that's where I'm at right now. And that's, how I've been able to form some of these habits that I have more resistance to. Yeah, no, absolutely. absolutely. And I, you know, it's so funny you tell when I first got into meditation, I used to use the timer on my phone and uh, I'm like, okay, today I'm going to go five minutes <laughs> and I'll put a timer. Right. And I'm like, I'm sitting there. And then I remember there'd be times going, is my alarm going to go off soon? <laughs> like, I'm like, you literally like kind of force it. But now I'm in a world where I don't need the timer anymore. Because I remember I got to the point where the timer used to go off at 10 minutes. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's too soon. Because you so, you're so deep into your meditation. You're so deep into visualizing. You're so deep into your thoughts that when the alarm goes off, you're like, oh, my God, it's too soon. But I remember when I first started, I used to be like, seriously, clock, ring right now. <laughs> like, and, and it's just the craziest thing where – you just keep doing the same thing. You keep doing the same thing. You get, you actually get better at it. You actually adapt to it. You, you, it's, it's part of your ecosystem now. And then you just like, you just make it part of your daily routine or your daily life. And it's just, it's so mad. It's to me, it's magical. Like I, I first, when I heard about meditation, I go, is that prayer? Is that is like, what is that breathing? Like what, what, and I, I did it didn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? And uh, after research and after talking to people and then trying it micro style, it's uh, it's like it's it's part of the things where I, I have to do like I, and I'm finding new ways to do it differently and stuff like that just because uh, it really contributes to the success of my mindset but it contributes to the success of each and every day. There's 365 days in a given year and I'm going to the playoffs days. I'm telling you right now. So out of those 365 days, I'm getting more wins than L's because of me just visualizing and meditating and things of that nature. So well said, man. Yeah, so much good stuff. And I think that, you know, it's that consistent practice over time. It doesn't have to, you don't have to hit a home run every day, but you know, a lot of things we've talked about, there's been so much good stuff of growth mindset and, and little wins and, you know, being someone fine with those, those micro improvements are going to take you to big, big places over time. And I think there's, you know, knowing your why connection to those things, there's, there's so much powerful stuff from, from this episode today. And I, I wish we had another hour to talk, but I know we're, we're running yeah. out, running out of time here. So I uh, want to transition into, you know, as we make our way to the end of the show, just like, you know, it's, 
it's easy to listen to you and, and you have all these strategies in place. You have these things in place. It, it, it sounds like you have it all going on. You're living the healthy lifestyle. Your career is thriving. I know you're having such an impact there and you're doing all these things right. And you're getting into life coaching. Now you're helping other people do the same. You're leading so many people. And how easy is it to, for someone to look from the outside in your life and be like, man, you, you have it like you have it all like you're you're not struggling you're a passionate guy to be around your energy is contagious and it's so easy to look from the outside is and especially for guys listening to the show and there's it's it's hard to to not compare and be like well he's got it all figured out i'm i'm not doing as well i'm not where i want to be and i think you and i would both be the first to admit like our journeys haven't been all easy or all smooth and i'd love if you could be you know vulnerable with listeners and to what's a challenge you're currently facing or have faced in the past that ended up being a major catalyst for your growth as a man, either something you maybe mentioned already or something separate from that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this, I'd definitely love to share, uh, share with all the listeners and yourself. And I hope you guys believe me because this is the honest to God truth. Growing up, I was the shyest boy in class. Like, no joke. And you can hear me go, there's no way in hell. And even to this day, I go from extrovert to introvert, depending on my environment. Like, sometimes if I'm in an environment and I don't feel comfortable, and that's what it is. If I don't feel comfortable, I go into my shell. And that's the one thing I struggle with all the time is, why? Like, I know what to do. I know how to be. People like you. People love you. You inspire others. Why do you keep going back into the shell? And, 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 and I can't like get out of it until I like someone talks to me or I talk to someone and get the ball rolling. And then when the ball's rolling, then the extrovert starts coming out. And then I start like, now, you, now I'm a kid in the candy store. I, got, like, I, just, I eat a bunch of sugar and I'm just on sugar high and I'm just running everywhere. And that's, that's how I am. But that's how I was at a, at a young age is like, I was such an introvert where I was the kid that didn't like doing like oral presentations and I would be the kid in class going, Oh my God, please let the bell ring. Please let the bell ring. Please let the bell ring. And when the bell ring, like you, you, you feel so great, but you, you still know you still have to do it eventually, but you want to be the last person. And that stuck with me for, since me being little. And it's even happened to this day. So I know for a lot of people out there, there's like, there's no way in hell, but it just, it's just, you, you don't know the struggles. You don't know the hard work that people put in to get where they're at. It's like watching a movie. You're like, oh my God, I love that movie. But you don't know what the production team had to do, the director team, the actors, the actresses. We don't see the hard work, the mistakes, the, the missing of the lines, the forgetting the lines, people showing up late, the weather wasn't pro. We don't see that stuff. But we see the movie and go, man, they have a glorious life. Man, that was easy to do. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. You know, so that's me being vulnerable, man. Like I, I just, to this day, like there's a lot of people that don't know that about me because they don't believe it. They're like, there's no way in hell. The way you talk, the way you present yourself, the way you show up, there's no way in hell. But if you go, if you, if we had like, even at the, at the, when we first met Dave, even back then, if you can go back in the time that there was like CCTV and you could watch the videos, just watch my body language. Even when we first met, you know, just watch the body language. It wasn't like we started talking the first day you were there. It's not like, like we're, we're, we're chums. It, it, like, it had to build to it. And then when I got comfortable with you, then my side of talking about football, talking about what you do, why did you move out here? Like that started coming out. But that's who I am, man. I'm, I am a hybrid of an introvert and an extrovert. You know, what, what do I like better? I love being an extrovert. Introvert's not bad though. I like being an introvert too because it allows me to self-assess the environment I'm in. It allows me to think to myself and stuff like that. But that is one of the challenges for me is like, why does that still happen? I'm 42 years old and it still happens to me to this day. And it's a struggle that I fight with all the time because I can go to a business trip. I've been with my company for 16 years and I'll walk into a meeting and the introvertness will kick in. And it, it takes time for me to get going. Yeah. So hopefully I answered your question, but uh, yeah, man, that's, that's me in a nutshell. And that's the honest to God truth. I am not lying. I'm just making this stuff to make it sound good in the podcast. This is honest to God truth. Like if I had some like ESPN replays, like tapes, like videotapes, I would, I would let, I would share it with you. I'd give it to you. Like, look, look, look at my body language. Look, look how I'm acting. That's, that's who I am, man. Wow. No, I appreciate you sharing that. That's, that's gotta be super encouraging for, for people listening, super encouraging for, for myself to be able to see, cause it's, you know, it, and it circles back on all the things we've been talking about in the show of, uh, if you told yourself, like, I'm always going to be shy, I'm always going to be introverted, I can't, 
Like I can't get out of my, sh- like if those are the, the loops that are replaying in your head, then you're going to make those things a reality. And you know, how do you get out of that? little wins, a quick conversation, like building a little bit of trust mm-hmm. and those things too. And it's, mm-hmm. it's funny how that all, you know, it all circles back and it's all the, the same things you're, you're preaching are the same things you're, you're applying and the things that, that you struggle with. And that's, you know, that's really cool yeah. to hear. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Thank last, you. yeah. Last hypothetical question. Ask, ask all the guests here to, to wrap up. So our hypothetical scenario 10 years back, you run into, you know, you're leaving your favorite coffee shop and you run into your younger self of, of 10 years back and you run into 10 years younger, Arn, and he stops, he's like, Hey, I need some, I need some life advice. I, you're trying to pick your brain. You only have 60 seconds. You're on your way to a super important work function. You only have 60 seconds to talk with him. What advice are you telling younger Arn? What are you saying to him and what advice are you giving to him? All right, Arn. Hey man, great catching up with you. It's great to see you. First off, Take all your money out. Buy Apple, Amazon, and Tesla <laughs> right now. Do it. Don't cash it out. Buy it. Do it. But in reality, it's okay to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. Enjoy the journey. Trust me. We're going to learn from it. We're okay. We are okay. Be fearless. Make mistakes. Don't let that stop you. And that's it. That's it. Love that's it. it. Make some money. Make some money. And uh, let them know it's okay to make some mistakes. <laughs> yeah, well, that's not that's enough to give me goosebumps, man. Nice, uh, that, well, well said on on that. And and we'll take we'll take the money with it. Yeah, we'll we'll take that. With it. Yeah. <laughs> well, Iron Man, this this has been an absolute blast. Where can uh where can people reach out to you? Where can they find you if someone's someone's looking to get a hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, please, uh, I, I go on, on my Instagram. Be great at Aaron. Uh, be great. Uh, wait, be great with Aaron at Instagram. Sorry about that. Uh, I don't really say that every single day, to be honest with you. Uh, but I know uh, Dave will tag it on, on, the, on the episode show notes and stuff like that. But that, that's, your, that's the best place to reach out to me. I, I do three-minute daily videos every single day of some type of growth mindset teaching, uh, motivation, inspiration. And I, I just, I do it every day. I started in uh, the middle of the pandemic in June and I haven't stopped yet. So I, I think I've posted... 167 straight videos since uh, since uh, I started, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. I think everybody has three minutes, and I have three minutes to share with the world. My goal in life is just to help other people. That's all. I, that's all I care about. That's my passion when I get out of bed. Is help people in my work, help people out of work, help people in my family. Just I just want to help, and that's the reason why I am so honored, Dave. And I can't tell you enough. I am so thankful that you reached out to me to allow me to be on this platform with you. I had a blast. And if, if I helped one person through this, my life is, my life is great. So thank you so much. And if, yeah, yeah, I, I had an absolute blast. This has been, you know, completely exceeded my expectations and I, I had good expectations for it. So it's uh, speaks, speaks <laughs> to you and your, your energy. And, and I, I, if anyone's half as inspired as I am after the, the talk, I, I think people are in a good place. So definitely if you guys were inspired, encouraged by this, go check out his Instagram handle, reach out to him and Arnada Blast. Thanks for coming on, man. Thank you. Appreciate you, bud.